Hi, so these are the uh, Chinese meteor lights that I was saying about a uh, couple videos back I think I was mentioning about getting these ones uh, very cheap uh, oh, I don't know about three or four pound I think um, if you get them shipped from China now um, Big Clive has done quite a, um, a few videos actually and one very good one that explains a lot about these so I'll just briefly go over uh, you know my feelings about them and uh, show you a bit more detail um, about what they are and what they can do um, basically as you can see this is what they do um, there are one, two, I think there's eight, four, four there as well. So we've got eight of these tubes all together. Uh, each one's a different colour. We've got blue, orange, we've got greens, reds, uh, green again, blue, orange and red. When you've actually got these out um, on the uh, stretched out, uh, properly, they're actually kind of grouped together in the warm, wrong way. You you kind of got like two oranges, two blues, two reds sort of thing. So probably you have to uh, chop the wires up and uh, rearrange them a bit um, at some point. So anyway, let's have a uh, closer look at these. Okay, so I've got the lights back on now. So as you can see, these are what the strips look like. They're just a plastic uh, casing. These ones are 30 centimeters long. You can also get 60 centimeters. I think that's that's the two sizes. I don't think there's any other ones. There might be a 90 centimeter one. I'm not too sure. Basically, they've got what have we got in this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen LEDs per uh, sort of strip, if you want to call it that. Uh, icicle. The uh, little chip on there as well, which is controlling it. I don't know what that chip is. Uh, Big Clive was um, playing around with a PIC-12 um, making his own uh, version of one of these and I think he he seemed to reckon that there possibly is a PIC-12 it's got the, sort of the same pin out uh, by the looks of it but the um, markings have actually been rubbed off it completely so we can't uh, tell what chip they've got they basically just do this uh, sort of cascading thing start at one end and just run down to the other end Interesting, they go out a sequence of each other. When you first uh, plug them in, you will find that you get the whole lot in one bunch going down. So if I unplug these, and we plug them back in again, you should see what I mean. There we go, you see uh, they're in sequence now. But they do go out of sequence, um, which apparently is what they're supposed to do, so that's fine. I'm not quite sure why I would have thought if the program the chip is running is just running the same program over and over and over the theory they should be you know reasonable chance they'd be in synchronization with each other so I don't know if it's been programmed in uh, for them to sort of go out of sync because uh, they don't talk to each other as such it's just each chip controls its own set of LEDs there's no communication between uh, the different uh, the eight different strips uh, here at all now we'll have a look at the uh, box that it comes in um, and see what uh, nonsense we can find on that. Alright, so this box that these ones came in, uh, LED, I'm not even going to pronounce that, but uh, German I think they've got the main uh, language on there, maybe incorrect. These are a bit different, the ones that Big Clive did and um, that he had uh, came in a box with just instructions for generic fairy lights. As such, these ones actually do seem to be relating to these lights. We've got here LED meteor rain light. Uh, we've got so tube 30 centimeters in length, diameter 12 millimeters, LED 18 LEDs, double side shiny. Okay, <laughs> cables two cables, the length of each cable is 30 centimeters. Waterproof transformer, and we get onto that, it's definitely not waterproof. Input 100 volts, 240 volts AC, 50 60 hertz. Output 5 volts, 1000 milliamps. 1.2 meter cable wire with transformer. Now we've got a section here characteristics. We've got the light of every bulb turns on and turns out one by one in sequence. The speed is very quick. Well, it's not super quick, but yes, given that one. As a whole, the light per pieces is not the same in lighting, disorderly and unsystematic. Okay. The application widely used in garden, hotel, tree, home, street, 
moles, park, etc. The whole product use waterproof material suit for outdoor using. Now, whereas you could possibly say that these themselves would be semi-waterproof, they're not the best. I mean, they are just uh, glued in. Uh, well, I'll show you how you can get these apart in a minute. They're just glued in with some hot melt glue. Uh, there, so they'd be kind of, you know, waterproofish, and you're generally running on a low voltage of five volts. The transformer that it came with is this one here. As you can see, I have chopped the cable off. I'm currently running at, I've got it connected uh, first off through the Porter Power power monitor there so we can have a look at the power that it's using. And uh, I've just got it connected to a, it's a transformer I had from an old product that gives out five volts and it's obviously a lot better quality than this heap of junk, as we shall see. So we'll just take this apart. If you've seen Big Clive's video, um, so I'll, I'll link it in down below. Um, on these, there's two types of power supplies you get. One is the um, switch mode one, seems okay-ish, and the other one is this capacitive dropper one. Now also, if you look on the, I mean the power pack, the pack they send you is obviously not UK. Uh, that one there, is that American? European. I was, I was expecting to get one with round pins because that's what I've seen other people get, but no. So anyway, this one just says travel charger, AC inputs, 100, 250 volts, output DC 4.2 volts, plus or minus 5 volt, 5 0.4. Sorry, plus or minus 0.5 volts, 500 milliamps. So that doesn't tally up at all with the 5 volts and 1,000 milliamps that the uh, the box that it came in stated. So we take this one out, and there we are. So this is basically it. We got a capacitor here, a uh, resistor there. It says 510k, uh, which is just to uh, dissipate the charge in the capacitor. CBB22. I'm guessing it's 2.2 microfarads because that's the same as what uh, I've seen in other ones. Basic uh, four diode bridge rectifier, a LED there, which is lovely, very nice, except you can't see it because there's no hole in the case for the LED lights, so you won't see that that's on. Cheap rubbishy capacitor, and then two Zener diodes, 6.2 volts to clamp the output voltage. Now, the problem with this is. As you can see, it's not a uh, switch or a power supply, it's not a proper isolating transformer or anything, and it is referenced to mains. So if you've got this plugged in, and although you're getting out, which would be going by the diode, you're getting out about 6, 6.2 volts, what would happen effectively is you're also going to be superimposing the mains voltage on it, presumably anything up to whatever your mains voltage is. Uh, in this country, sort of 230 to 250 volts, around 250 volts here, which is fine. But of course, if you were taking one of these apart for some reason, um, playing around with it, touching them on their own shouldn't really be a problem. But if you're touching something else, uh, metal, so a uh, kitchen sink, a tap, radiator, something like that that's uh, that's been uh, earth bonded then you're easily going to get a, a, quite a nasty shock off the, one of these. So, yeah, I would say, if anything, don't use the power supply that it comes with. Just ditch that and, uh, you know, come up with your own uh, solution. Buy one off, you know, buy a phone charger effectively and just uh, use a USB lead and, uh, you know, strip the cables back and uh, re-terminate them. Now, the other thing you get with this is there is no polarity indication. The red marks I've put on here are what I've added. When you get them, there's a little notch there which kind of make you think, oh yes, that must match up with somewhere, but it doesn't. So these can go in either way around. I'm not going to plug it in the other way around because I don't know what will happen. I don't really want to blow these ones up. So the way to get around that and this was uh, kindly pointed out by uh, Big Clive's video. Obviously, power supply-wise, you can plug it in, 
use your multimeter set to volts, DC volts, and then measure what the output is. And obviously, one way around, you'll get you know the five volts, etc. Normal. The other way around, you'll get the same voltage, but you'll get a minus symbol next to it to indicate that it's in minus. So, yep. Uh, use a multimeter on your power supply that will tell you which side of these which pin is positive then you can mark it with a sharpie either well red or black basically um, I just chose to mark the positive I've seen other people choose to mark the negative now for the lights themselves now this was like I say pointed out by a big club the easiest way to, to check these is to use one of these little uh, button cells. This is the uh, CR2032 uh, 3 volts little button cell. Very useful because they're not going to be able to deliver much current so it's unlikely that if you got it the wrong way around it's going to cause uh, these to fail but you can basically just put that in between two pins and as you can see there we've got them lighting up. The positive is the top of this battery so we can see that marks with there obviously if we go the other way around then they're not lighting up so that's just a useful way of uh, checking the polarity and then you can mark it on the end there these strips are designed to be uh, grouped together um, at the end of the set you get another connector similar to what you've got your power coming in so obviously if you have then a, another set of these you can then plug them in like so. So it's worth, once you've worked out your polarity and everything else, once you've got them powered up, worth popping a multimeter in this end and then marking that as well with a red or black mark to tell you which is the positive or the negative. Now I'm not too sure how many strips you can actually run on these all together, um, that would depend on your power supply. You could certainly run them off batteries, um, that wouldn't be a problem at all. They run quite nicely, I mean that that cell is uh, only 3 volts and if we pop that like that, obviously they're not super bright at the moment, if we turn these main lights off as you can see still quite a nice effect and that's just with 3 volts so we'll plug those back in and then we've got this little bit we can screw over here. I'm not sure what the maximum working voltage of these are. I will probably just say it's best to stay close to sort of 5 to 6 volts. Um, obviously if you, you could try it at higher voltage, like sort of you know, 7, 8, but I wouldn't like to say what could happen. Um, as we don't know exactly what that chip is, we don't know the uh, specifications of it and likely put too high voltage in, you're just going to blow that chip apart. So probably best just to stick with the standard 5 volts. And like I say, if you get one of these supplies with it, which you will, if it's a switch mode 1, it's probably slightly better quality than this, um, but generally just throw them out. Too dangerous, not worth using. Now current wise, we've got here the Porter Power monitor here. Now at the moment I've been running it for 50 minutes uh, approximately uh, to see what the uh, current draw is. So in 50 minutes we've used 50 milliamps, so you're going to use 60 milliamps per hour on these RGB ones. Um, and that's at 5 volts so obviously if you're going to run them off batteries that's something to bear in mind uh, that you're not going to get a massive amount of time uh, you could do what uh, I've seen done by Big Clive was to use a solar panel and a mobile phone battery built a little circuit using that and transistor etc to turn them on at night and then they, they you know once the light comes back up then the uh, transistor switches them off um, etc in the daytime or obviously if you've got your own power supply to use with them um, then you can just plug them in that way around now as far as the actual power goes it jumps about a lot on these um, I understand the white ones are supposed to be very very low in their power consumption but these ones as you can see it fluctuates a lot there we've currently got where are we? Four, 
So we jump in between sort of 70 odd milliwatts up to 300 and something. And if you look at the amperage, we're going from sort of well, at the top end, we seem to get uh, 1000, uh, sorry, 100 milliamps. And at the low end, we're getting about 170 microamps, but it's continuously fluctuating up and down. So not ideal for getting a sort of stable power reading, but we can go by the milliamp hours that this is stating that we are using. And like I say, that we're currently running for 52 minutes and we've got 51 milliamps that's been taken. So that's the basic overview of them. The so the colours you can get are obviously you can get a uh, you get eight in a set. You could obviously just have eight of all white or blue or red or green etc. Or you can just get these ones which have different colour in each tube. Now, should you wish to take these apart for any reason, such as the uh, LEDs have failed, one of the LEDs might have gone. They're not the best uh, quality. They don't. They're all kind of a bit random in there. You can see, is uh, what have we got? There's one there that's kind of been bent over. Some of them are bent over more than others. Some of them are slightly wonky. So, but I guess what do you expect for sort of three, four pounds? The easiest way to get these apart, if you've got a uh, on these heat gun things, I've got it set to 100 degrees, and we just slowly warm this end. The cable goes in. And that just helps melt the glue. Luckily, it is well by the looks of it, just hot melt glue. Um, which is ideal if you want to get them apart because you can just melt it easy enough and it will uh, stick back again afterwards. So try that. Yep. And that will just slide out. And as you can see, it's basically just a white uh, PCB. Quite flexible, so be careful not to uh, not to bend it too much or break it. Our chip at the top, which we don't know exactly what it is, it's a shame they've rubbed the number off. And uh, yeah, the cable's coming in, soldering, again not the best. But hey, it does the job. So I might just straighten that LED up while we're at it. I'm expecting, that pro guessing probably most, that they're probably all supposed to be bent through the hole slightly, but so they're not all soldered in a way that allows you to to bend them down properly. Anyway, that's fine. And then you can pop it back in your tube. And you might just have to heat the glue up a little bit again afterwards just to get it to, to sit back in correctly. But there we are, that'll do for now. So yes, yeah, so that's a general overview and look at these uh, Chinese meteor lights. Hope you found that video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and uh, catch you soon for the next video. Thank you.